Hello and welcome to a new video with PSD Box. I'm Andre, and today I have something really interesting for you. I want to show you an alternative to Photoshop. Let I could call it an alternative uh, or Photoshop clone <laughs> online. It's a free uh, browser-based image editor which you can use to edit even PSD files, sketch files, or pretty much any other image format that you can think of. And we have the most important thing that we have, at least for me as a photo manipulator, is that we have uh, the ability to work with layers and blend modes and all that, uh, all of that stuff. I'm going to make a, a quick demonstration. I created this really quick manipulation in just a, maybe 10 or 15 minutes just to see how the program works. And the most important of all, it's free. It's called Photo Photopia. I, I don't know if I pronounced it uh, correctly. You will see the link on the video and also on the video description, and it's up here as well. It's a free software which uh, you can use uh, on your browser. So, um, and this is the interface, okay? This is the PSD file that I created, and you can see on the right-hand side here on the layers palette, um, we have all the layers here. Now, for people that don't use Photoshop, or I guess most of you, um, at least know what Photoshop is. That's why I guess you, you follow my channel, but uh, I'm going to show you a little bit how it works. I'm going to close this, click accept. And when you open, when you first get to the side, you get this uh, screen. You can also have uh, several languages. It's in Spanish and English, and they're translating it to other um, languages as well. You can select your language from here. And also, I think you can even um, you can even help translating this. I'm not really sure. I didn't investigate this yet. But you can open some uh, demo, a demo file, of, uh, a sketch file, for example. or um, And you can see all the layers here. And we, you can edit this and, um, well, adapt this to your, uh, to, your, well, to your project. You can create logos and you can see all the file formats that supports right over here. Let's create a new project. And when you uh, click the new project, you have the option to create several um, predefined sizes uh, for your document. And even better, you can even paste an image from your clipboard. For example, um, I used this image um, just a few moments ago. If I right click and choose copy image, I can go back here and press, press Ctrl Command V. And it's going to create a new document with the image that I pasted. And it's going to put it on a new layer. And if I get another one, for example, um, let's get, uh, I don't know, uh, this one. I'm going to right click, copy image, and press Ctrl Command V. This will paste it uh, on a new, it should paste it on a new layer. And if you drag an image from your computer, uh, let's do that. If you drag an, uh, an image, for example, this one, onto your browser, uh, on this, um, on, uh, on the software, you can see that it's a new. It's going to create a new layer as a smart object. So we have the ability to work with smart objects as well. The keyboard shortcuts and the controls are very similar to Photoshop. Zooming in with Alt and the mouse wheel, and you can see it works really fast without any kind of lag. I did notice some lag um, and the program slowing down when you use really high resolution images, but I, I guess that's because of my my graphics card is not really good. I'm not really sure about that. But if you see that you are using a 10,000 pixels by 10,000 pixels image, maybe you should make it a little smaller. Uh, also, uh, you can see that the smart object here can be rasterized. If you right-click on the layer, you can have this uh, menu here, which allows you to rasterize, which means, um, well, you kind of mm, remove the smart object and and all of that stuff. You can have layer styles. If you double-click on a layer, you get the layer styles. Uh, let's uh, click here. Uh, this gives us a shorter name. You can expand the panels uh, from here. Uh, like that. And if you double click, as I said, you get the layer styles, just like in Photoshop. And layer styles work by adding well, all kinds of um, styles. For example, if you have a text, um, I assume you already know this, but for people that don't know this, I'm just going to make a quick demonstration. You can see the color selector is here. Again, uh, the keyboard shortcuts are the same. With the D key, you reset the colors, and with the X key, you switch. And let's fill this with black. Alt and Backspace, just like in Photoshop. And here I'm going to add a text. Uh, for example, let's uh, switch to black and let's type PSD box. And I'm going to double click to select the text and use a bigger size. Okay, and we have some fonts here. I think these are uh, Google fonts, uh, which is awesome because you have all the fonts that uh, Google Fonts has. I, I'm not sure if these are Google Fonts, okay? But anyway, let's use this one, for example. And with layer styles, what you can do, if you double click here, you can add 
shadows, you can add inner glows, uh, and you have also control over the blend mode that we have here, okay? You have color overlay just like in Photoshop. And the good thing about this that not even Photoshop has, the previous versions of Photoshop have, is the ability to add multiple, for example, multiple color overlays or multiple gradient overlays. And in Photoshop CS5 or CX, uh, CS4, you, you didn't have this, upper, uh, this um, feature here. So this is really cool. You also have the same, um, you have alignment properties, you have uh, paragraph properties. If you click this uh, button over here, you can change the paragraph style, the char uh, character, you can change the, well, the type of, uh, well, the properties of the text. Okay, so you can create logos with this because you also have the ability to work with uh, vector files. So you can create um, paths and shapes and save this on formats and then use uh, use it on a um, as your logo without losing quality when you scale it up and stuff like that. So uh, let me show you how I made that really quick manipulation. Um, let's close that. And what I did is I just started with an image that I have myself. Let's, uh, I have downloaded some images here. And basically what I did is I just drag this from my computer, control command tab, drop it over here. And by default, it's going to create a new document with this, uh, with this size. If I go to image, I can change the canvas size. I can change the image size. Um, but I'm going to leave it like that for now. And well, here you have all the menus. You can select color range, just like in Photoshop. So you can select blues, for example. Uh, just by clicking here, you can select, and with the Shift key, you can add areas to your selection. And when you click OK, you're gonna make the selection around the color that you selected or the tone. It's not as advanced as Photoshop, but it's really cool. For being an online editor, you have lots of features. For example, you can use the magic wand to select parts of the sky with a shift key. As I said, you can add areas to your selection and you can also use layer masks. So let me show you that. I'm gonna select the sky just like this and I'm gonna create a layer mask now with the active selection. I created the layer mask. With control D you can deselect just like in Photoshop. Control I to invert it. And now with the brush, with the B key, I can select the layer mask and I can increase the hardness of my brush. You can see you have all sorts of brushes here. Um, I don't know if you can change them. I didn't try it yet. Um, I think these are all the brushes that you have. I don't know if you can import more. And you can just, well, uh, reboot the sky just like you would do in Photoshop. As easy as that. And the good thing about this is that you can turn it into a smart object if you want. Uh, so I could right click and choose convert to smart object. The layer mask, it looks like it's applied, but it's not. If I double click here, it's gonna open it on a new tab and I can edit it here, just like in Photoshop. Now I could create a new layer underneath and I can add a sky, for example. Let's um, add this one. I'm Obviously I'm doing this really, really good, quick. So I um, just wanna show you how it works, that you have the ability to do all of this stuff. So maybe sometimes you're not at the office or something, you're not at home and you wanna edit an image quickly and you have, you wanna make a quick um, demonstration or something like that, or you wanna edit a quick photograph, you can do this uh, with this uh, software. Let's mask this like that and save it. Control S, smart object updated, and let's go back here. Okay, so this is my new sky. Of course, uh, the layer mask is not, is not really good because I made this really quick. We also have the cloning tools that we have in Photoshop. So here you can see spot healing brush, healing brush and the patch tool. So you can even make photo retouch here. I'm gonna rasterize this because we don't have the option to to uh, sample from multiple layers. So if I wanna heal this part of the ground, I have to rasterize the layer because here uh, you have to work destructively. So you don't have the option to sample from multiple layers. But just to show that it works, I'm gonna try and clean this part over here. And you can see how it, how nicely it works. It's really awesome. Uh, the clone stamp tool, exactly the same. Uh, for example, if I want to clone, I don't know, let's see. This part over here, I can, I can press the Alt key. Sample, you don't get that um, cursor, but it's sampled, okay? And now I can paint. Uh, the same over here, if I want to sample this part over here, I can Alt click and just paint here. 
and I, I duplicated that part over there. So we have lots of advanced features for being an, an online editor. Actually, I've, I've used a few ones and this is the, the by far the most advanced one that I tried and you can get really uh, awesome results with it. You have, let's try some, uh, some of the adjustment layers. Uh, for example, I can add a gradient map and you don't have the presets that we have in Photoshop, but you can create your own gradient map. Simply just click here, um, choose custom. You can use background and it's gonna create a wide back, well, depending on you have, what you have here on the color selector. But for example, I, I can use custom and create my own gradient. Uh, let's say I want this color and for the highlights, I want something like this. Click OK and voila. And now I can change the blend mode of this, of course. You can use, for example, let's use soft light and see what it does. Okay, so we can create quick effects for your images. If you just wanna do uh, basic editing, we can use, um, I don't know, maybe multiply to darken the image and drop the opacity of the layer. And uh, the sky, maybe I would put it a little higher up like that. Obviously here, it's not gonna look nice because uh, maybe I should have used a, a gradient here instead of the magic wand, but I just wanted to show you how the magic wand works. So let's leave this down here because it's gonna mask it a little better. Okay, um, what else? Let's try another uh, adjustment layer. You can use the channel mixer just like in Photoshop, so you can change each channel uh, on it by itself. Um, what else? You have all the adjustments that you have in Photoshop. You can use curves, levels, of course, uh, and you can go into, you can even change the kind of um, curve that you can create here. And of course, you can go into the channels and create your own adjustments here and something like that, maybe. And what else? Let's add a stock image um, here, the one that I just uh, showed you. I'm gonna click on this, right click. I'm on, uh, on unsplash.com, which is from where I get my images. So basically you don't even have to save your images on your computer, just go here, right click, copy image, go back and paste with Control V. And now change the blend mode of this to screen to get rid of the white background. If you wanna know all of the um, keyboard shortcuts here on more, you can, click keyboard shortcuts and you'll have this uh, menu here which shows you what are the keyboard shortcuts for all the commands that we have. For example, uh, Alt Command T to load the free transform. And again, if you wanna constrain the proportions with the shift key, just like in Photoshop, you can make this image a little smaller and put it right over there. And let's zoom in a little more. And then I created the light effect on the ground, creating a new layer. Let's put it underneath and I changed the blend mode to color dodge just like I would do in Photoshop. And with the brush tool, I would select a dark tone like this. And I would use a bigger brush and with a lower hardness value. A little bigger. The brush size, um, when you make it smaller, it looks like this. But when you pass, I think 200 pixels or something like that is gonna stay the same if, even though if you even though you increase the size of it so I don't know if this is a bug but anyways so I'm gonna paint, uh, paint one there or a couple of clicks control alt command T and I'm gonna make it smaller with shift alt and resize to the center and put this light over there okay and that's something really abstract that I made there let's add a something on top of everything, like for example, a solid color and use something like this. This is a technique that I use on some of my manipulations. Click OK and change the blend mode to exclusion. Now I have to, to know a little bit about blend modes, how they work, but as I say, it's just, a, just like in Photoshop. And here, if you double click and go back, since this is a layer, you can change the, you can change the look of it. Uh, you can change the settings. Okay, oops, you have to remember to click OK when you use the color picker, you have to click OK here, otherwise the color will not be set. Okay, and what else? Uh, maybe an exposure adjustment. Mm, I don't know, let's, oops, that's too much. I'm doing this really quick just for demonstration purposes, but um, just like in Photoshop, you have to uh, take your time if you wanna do something that's gonna worth uh, watching at, so. Uh, just take your time, okay? Just a quick, um, just a quick demonstration how of how this uh, settings here work and all of that. When you create a layer mask, you also have the option to drop the density of it, okay? So, for example, um, here if I want to 
hide the effect. I'm gonna press D to reset my colors and X. Uh, if I wanna hide this effect that I just created with the exposure, if I don't wanna see it right over here, I'm gonna paint with, um, with black uh, on this layer mask. Okay, see over here. You can also um, change the density of that uh, layer mask, which is kind of like the opacity and also the feather, which is smoothing the, the edges of the layer mask, which is really cool. Um, also, you can link and unlink this and you can create uh, clipping masks. So for example, if I, wanna, if I want this gradient map to only affect my ground here, this image over here, I can right click and choose create clipping mask. And now this will only affect my ground. So if I double click here to edit my, my gradient, I could change the colors and you will see that it's going, only gonna affect the, um, the ground layer. Okay, and click okay and you can see how it looks. And if I reverse this, you can see, let me just increase the opacity so you can see it better. Okay, now it's only affecting the, the ground layer because I clipped this to, to my, to my layer over there. Okay. So, um, it's a really awesome software, which you can use as I said to edit PSD files. Let me show you how you can save this. If you go to save, uh, you can also publish online, take a picture. I don't know what it does. Uh, you can also export. You can see all the file formats that you can export to. So for example, you can create a resume or something and export it as PSD file or a, maybe a business card. You can export it in PDF or, um, in other formats. You can see all the formats that you can use to export this, uh, export assets. I don't know exactly what it does. Um, yeah, maybe it's going to export layers or something like that. I'm not exactly sure what this does. And you can of course save it as a PSD file, which is what I most interested in because I work with Photoshop and maybe I'm out of the, out of my office and I want to make something really quick and I want to be able to edit it later on when I get home or something like that. And you can save this in, uh, in PSD format and then open it back in Photoshop or other software that supports, uh, PSD formats. So I encourage you to give it a try. It's a really awesome software. Uh, I hope they keep developing it and adding more features to it. Um, I really want to know what you think about it. Give it a try and post a comment on my video to let me know what you think about this. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you have any questions or any uh, suggestions, just as I said, post a comment on my video and I'll try to reply as soon as possible. So thanks for watching and see you next time.